Hey guys, welcome to another 0-60 to DIY video. What are we doing today? Today we're going to do a DIY install of the Resla iBus interface. Now I actually have one of these in my X5 that I put the Android in a few years ago and they're a bit of a must-have really. You might not realise but when you add an Android to an E39, E53 or an E46 you actually lose the ability to control the trip computer function. So your average fuel consumption, the two different trip distances, um, yeah, it's just a, a few little functions that you can no longer control now you've got the Android and this brings it all back to life. Yeah, so a clever, a clever gentleman in Germany has developed this. It looks pretty simple but it allows the Android unit to still talk to the onboard computers and the, and the trip computers so you can still get, well you retain all of those factory functions and he actually also unlocks a few other cool things as well. Yeah, so this video is going to be a quick install and we'll run through the features in the second part of the video. Yeah. Let's get into it. So there's a few different ways you can get this installed. We're gonna connect it to the factory blue connector, which is not currently used with the aftermarket Android. So to get that done, we're just gonna remove the Android, which we have here, and locate the factory connectors. So to get the iBus tapped into the iBus system in the vehicle. Uh, these are the three wires we need. We have the grey, white and yellow wire. That's actually the factory iBus signal. The red and purple, sorry, red and green wire is for the power and then the brown wire is the earth. Now we're going to do it in a way that is reversible. I don't think this car is ever going to be put back to factory but it'd be, be nice if the original unit can be put in if somebody down the track ever wants to do it. So we'll get those tapped in and you'll see us once we've got it connected to the Android. That is all of the connectors spliced into their corresponding wires on the plug and the actual iBus dongle, I was got a bit carried away, I've already tucked it in its little hole. Okay, there's the actual dongle plugged into the USB port there. So I'll be able to tuck it all out of the way down there. Now before it all goes into its home, we'll power it up and make sure it's working okay. Okay, so we have the iMus app installed. This is the first power up with the dongle connected. And it should, USB ready, so that's connected. Unlock failed. Okay, so that'll be coming up because we haven't actually paid for the software yet and we didn't want to pay until we know it's gonna actually work in with the car. So to check that it's actually linking into the CAN bus, it is, so it's pulled the VIN information and it hasn't been serviced in 74 years. Might have to do a reset. All right, so that's working. We're gonna get the app paid for and then we'll come back in a few seconds and show you some of the features. Okay, well, it's all installed and I've actually been using it for, well, a bit over a week now just to get my head around everything. In this part of the video, I was initially gonna show you all of the functions and what you can actually do with the iBus app, but it turns out there are just too many. It's almost, infinite the amount of options and changes and things you can turn on and off and connectivity between different parts of the car it's i knew there was a lot and i'm still i'm i'm just surprised so i have spent a bit of time setting it up to or playing with things that i i want to use in this vehicle so or things that i find useful at least so i'll talk about them in this video um and i guess if there's anything else in particular you want to see if it can do or any functions that you want to know if the iBus app is able to to do then just let us know in the comments and yeah we'll get back to you that way okay so to start with that's not the screen that it, it turns up on i've basically got it so when the car starts up the iBus app automatically starts up as well and from there inside the iBus iBus app you can choose another application to then start on the android after the iBus app has started the reason I've got the iBus app starting initially is because some of the functions I've got, some functions I've got turned on, uh, I want to use every single day, every time, like the DRL running lights. So I've got them turned on, so obviously that won't work unless the iBus app is running. So as soon as you start the car up, it boots the iBus app, gets in there, and all the things that I've got set up start working initially. I've got it so it jumps straight into the onboard computer display, which is this one here. 
again, when you first set it up, you can tweak and organize this information here. Uh, there are other options as well that you can have on there, but these are the things that I wanted to see. So remember that the original, my original E39 had the color, color screen that had the onboard computer. And when I went to the Android, I lost all of these functions. But now with the iBus app, straight away, I've got the range for the fuel that's left in the tank. Um, it shows you the engine, engine speed, currently idling at 700 RPM. Consumption, one and consumption two. And just quickly, you can see this little red button here to, to reset. Um, so you can even customize if you want that reset button or if you want to hold it to reset it. Every single thing has an option to change. Uh, average speed, engine temperature, coolant temperature, uh, horsepower, that's, I don't really use that, but it's kind of cool to have on there when you're driving. Battery voltage, the fuel level, currently at 45 liters. Speed, again, I don't really use that, but it's on there because it looks cool. And the ambient temperature. Then down the bottom, you can see there's a little picture of an E39 sedan, which is this car. And that is a live view of the vehicle. And anything that is highlighted is either operating or open. So as you can see, the rear left window is currently illuminated. I had the car tinted yesterday, so I haven't touched it, but that by it being highlighted means that it's open. So I'm just gonna press the up button. Boom, there it is. Now it's gone off. And it's the same with the driver's side windows, both front and rear. Gone off and gone out. So that means they are perfectly shut. I would show you going down and them illuminating, but it's not necessary and I can't really because the tint's still fresh so I can't risk it peeling. You can also see that the boot is highlighted which means it's open. I think as I was, as I was getting in I actually just accidentally hit the boot button. You can also see here the uh, headlight, well the park lights are on both front and rear. I've got that set up in the iBus app to have, well there's a DRL function so you can literally turn day, daytime running lights on and once you turn it on you can then choose what lights are illuminated for your daytime running lights. I just went with the angel eyes, which are the parking lights. Oh, and you can even choose front and rear. So I've only got the front parking lights on. I didn't want to put the rear parking lights on as a daytime running light. So you can see that there. If I then go to parkers, the rears light up, and the screen dims as well. And if I go to the full headlights, there you go. You get a high beam, high beams come on. A left indicator, and you can see all three indicators illuminating. Right indicator, and hazards. <laughs> and it does the same for the sunroof as well. There you go. I'm, I'm wrapped with that because I didn't realize that this car had all of those sensors and all of those functions and could, could talk to the IBIS app like that. So that's basically the screen that it sits on most of the time. But the next most popular one is the PDC screen, which is for the parking sensors. So again, that's this is just a larger view of what was just being displayed on the onboard computer screen. But this one is obviously so that when you're parking, so you can see the reversing lights have come on there. I'll drive up, I'll drive up to a, to a wall so you can see what it does. Driving up to the wall now. And you can see the parking sensors. So that's displayed there, which I thought was pretty cool. And it does the same for the rear parking sensors as well. <coughs> and you can see which, you can see which sensor is the closest and so on. Oh, it just picked up that wall. Okay, I'll turn them off. So I'll jump into the settings. This is the general app settings. Everything you can, you would expect to see in any typical application, your fonts and your languages, the themes. Um, there's your automatic start at reboot, which I've got turned on. Uh, change model series, again, because this is in E39, I've got E39, but there's an E53 and, actually there's an E46, yeah, E53, E83, and E85. And basically, if you change them, well, the main thing that changes is, rather than having a picture of an E39, you then have a picture of an E46 or E53 and so on and so on. But you can, this is just where you, you tweak all the visual things for the application. So the toolbar size, all that standard sort of stuff. The onboard computer settings, however, is where it starts to get a little bit more in-depth. Uh, I haven't really, I don't have much use for any of this type of stuff, but 
So there's the show, show the reset buttons. That's the ones that I was saying about before on the OBC display. So you can just press the reset button rather than having to hold it to reset it. Temperature color change, coolant operating temperature. You can change what the vehicle's coolant oper operating temperature should be because it does differ between some cars. The oil temperature, unfortunately this engine doesn't seem to have a sensor to pick that up, so it can't read that information. But I guess some of the other BMWs, it must have that sensor ready to go. And then it will tell you the exact temperature of the oil, not just if your engine's warm or cold. So it'll be like what it does for the coolant, but for the oil, which would be pretty handy to have. Maximum fuel level, maximum engine speed. You can set, so there's a gong. If you reach a high RPM when the engine is cold, I haven't turned that on because, well, you shouldn't rev your engine hard when it's cold. Uh, you can get warning notifications when the oil level or the voltage for the battery is too low. Change the format of the clock, which is simple, but it's at least it lets you personalize everything and to get it perfect. That was most of the stuff in there. I'll jump into, I'll go into light functions quickly because that was, that's pretty cool. So comfort blink, that's when you just touch the indicators for a second. So you can set how many times you want it to blink when you do that. And you can also set it to do other things on a comfort blink. For example, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to keep it on, but I turned it on because it was an option there. I thought it was kind of cool. So every time I do a comfort blink, the fog lights light up for that side that's, that I'm turning on. So to show you it working, I don't even need to jump out of the car. You can just go to the PDC display, do a comfort link, and you can see the fog light illuminate there. Okay, back into the light functions. So yeah, turn lights, that's uh, using the fog lights as a turn light. You can set it up to a certain speed. Daytime running lights, like I said, I've got the front park lights on. You can, you can change the, at what point the DRLs will turn on, whether it's on ignition one or ignition two. Highway lights, I thought that was quite interesting. Not really used here on Australia, but I guess if you're doing some autobahn stuff, you can set the speed at which you want the lights to turn on automatically. Uh, cornering light during comfort blinking, that's what I mentioned before. Show active light, so if you don't want the lights to illuminate on the PDC display, you don't have to, you can turn that off, but I thought it was a pretty cool function. And you can set a light show as well for when you unlock the car, but I haven't got that far yet. GPS data, that's pretty standard, the central locking system, that's... I mean, I could go on forever with this video. There are so many things, but it's not overly exciting. So if you've got any specific questions, let us know. Otherwise, I'll go into the um, the PDC in reverse. Okay, so parking display, the PDC for the front on, yes. You can make it so that it reduces the volume when you put it into reverse. You can also make it so that when you put it into reverse and the PDC comes on, whatever app you're in, the that PDC screen will pop up and then when you when you get out of reverse, it then goes back to whatever application you were using before. You can also make it so the mirrors, when you hit reverse, the mirrors will tilt down to look at the rear wheels or the, the parking lines automatically. Or you can turn on a little button on the screen so that when you put it into reverse, a button comes, pops up, one for the passenger side, one for the driver's side, and you can press that and then it will tilt down. And the last one in the PDC menu is if you want it to change to the recirculating air when you put it into reverse. They have thought of everything. Okay, lastly, the IKE settings. I was really surprised about this. So the IKE is the, up here on the dash cluster. The top line shows the kilometers, the ambient temperature, and your trip meter but the line below is when you hit the BC button on the stalk, it comes up with the time and the consumption and uh, range, all that sort of stuff, just the OBC stuff. But the IBIS app can actually display, control what is displayed on that screen. So you can set a welcome text so that when you jump in the car, it says, welcome David, or BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Whatever you want it to say will pop up there in the so there is an ike obc screen option which i haven't turned it on because i usually just run the actual obc display here and have all those functions anyway but you can choose to have the speed come up on the dash cluster and you can have the coolant temperature the oil temperature and the voltage it's cool but i run it all anyway on the on the obc screen so i'm going to leave it disabled the volume so show volume changes on the radio in ike for some reason, I can't get that to work. I've turned it on and off and reset the application and everything, 
but for some reason when you change the volume it doesn't come up on the dash cluster i'm not sure why if if you know what i'm doing wrong please let me know and lastly well not lastly another cool thing is you can have the where is it? It's got to be in here somewhere. Navigation info in IKE. So there is a few apps that it will work with. Not all of them, but Google Maps is one of them, which is what I mostly use on here. It will give you directions for the, for the navigation on your dash cluster, which I think is crazy because this is a relatively old card. It definitely didn't have any functions like that from factory, but now all of a sudden it does. It sort of brings it into the 20th century, which is quite nice. And the other thing is the track name. So when you're listening to Spotify, it will come up with the artist and title on your cluster. So that's probably the only exciting thing in there. What have we got left? I'll show you the, well, I'll show you the PDC. So for example, say you're driving along. So that's popped up. And there you can see the parking sensors working. But there it is, so you go into drive and it goes back out of the app. Well, I hope that sort of summarized what you can do with the Resla iBus interface. It's, it really blew me away when I started diving into it and turning, turning things off and seeing what you can actually do on these old E39s. So if you've got any other questions, just let us know in the comments. I definitely recommend it if you do have an E39 or an E46 or an E53 or an E38, well worth it. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next one.